boys, bad boys, what you gonna do? What you gonna do when they come for you? Bad boys, bad boys, what you gonna do to make me forgive you for bad boys too? That'd be funny. Alright, so Bad Boys for Life is the third installment of the Bad Boys franchise. Wait. Bad Boys for Life. Bad Boys for Life. You missed an opportunity there! Alright, so Bad Boys for Life is the next installment of the Bad Boys movies. The last one came out in 2003. And it reunites Will Smith and Martin Lawrence, who play Mike and Marcus from the first two movies, obviously. And they are about to go on one final ride when a, when a gunman comes around and starts killing various people who are associated with a, with various crimes in the past, and it all leads to Mike Lowry, played by Will Smith. And my history of the Bad Boys movies is not very good, because I remember, I remember watching the first installment on, like, Netflix several years ago. I didn't hate it, I just didn't like it. Like, I thought it was very generic, I thought it was very cliched. Um, Will Smith and Martin Lawrence were the best things in that movie, so I guess that's the thing that people really like about these movies. Um... Bad Boys 2 I thought was unwatchable. Just bad. I couldn't even finish it. Like, the first 30 to 40 minutes, I just hated it, and I'm like, no, can't take it anymore. So I haven't seen Bad Boys 2 all the way through. Oh, no. And so I wasn't really expecting anything good from this one. All I know is that um, instead of Michael Bay directing this movie, because he directed the first two movies, uh, it's a directing Duke duo. I'm not going to try to pronounce their names, unfortunately. And... I thought, it's like, oh, you have a new new directors involved instead of Michael Bay. So it's like, well, there's a chance this could be different. And I would say this is the best Bad Boys movie, but at the same time, it wasn't really that impressive to me. Because, like, everything overall in this movie is kind of just mixed. Like, uh, first off, Will Smith and Martin Lawrence, they're really good in this movie. Uh, they're, they haven't really lost any chemistry in the past two decades. Uh, they do have some really funny banter together. Uh, really uh, funny moments, really sweet moments as well. Uh, everyone else in this movie, they're fine. They're they're serviceable, they're passable, they're believable. Uh, they're just not, like, amazing. They just, just don't really stand out as much as, you know, Will Smith and Martin Lawrence do. Uh, Joe Pantoliano, he's good in the movie. Uh, you have, like, this new team of, like, uh, people who are helping uh, Smith and Lawrence with their case. They're fine. They kind of don't really do much. They do have, like, little quirks every now and then, but... They're just like, oh, I have this quirk, and it's never mentioned again. Or it's going to be mentioned once. And funny, I guess. Like, again, it's not like it's not like offensively bad or anything. Like, I could just watch, I watched this movie just fine. I was like, okay, this was serviceable, I guess, but I'm probably never going to watch it again. Uh, the action scenes, they're hit and miss. Sometimes they can be really cool, like done well, and sometimes they're not. They're like they're they're not like bad or anything. Like there's nothing really offensively bad in this movie. There's nothing really that bad in this movie. I'll say that. There's just nothing that really blew me away with this movie. Which I guess with some of the movies I've already seen this year, that that counts for something. Uh the main villain in this movie, he's not really that interesting. Also, another villain in this movie, she's not really that interesting. She, they're just generic villains without much depth, and they try to give them depth, and it doesn't really work for me. It's not like again, nothing in this movie is bad. I'm I feel like I've ripping, I feel like I'm ripping this movie apart, even though I feel even though I'm not. That's weird because like I say, there's nothing really bad here, but like there's nothing really good here either. This is just a serviceable movie to me. And coming from someone who you know is very critical of movies, who doesn't really care for the bad boys movies to begin with, I guess that's all I could really appreciate about these movies, uh, about this movie at least. It's like, it's, it, there's some fun moments, there's some dull moments, and, you know, if you're a fan of the first two Bad Boys movies, you'll probably really enjoy this movie. If you're not like me, then you might as well just skip it. But, if you catch it as, like, a matinee, you'll, you might enjoy it. Or, if you find it on, like, streaming services nowadays, if you find it, like, on streaming services in, like, March or April or something, you will you can enjoy it. But just, like, go, like... Go into the expectation that you're not about to see the best movie of the year. I mean, to be fair, that's what I did. I was like, I know this is not going to be a good movie. Or, I should say, this is not going to be the best movie ever. But it's like, it can be fun. It, it's a nice way to kill two hours. So, overall, I'll give uh, Bad Boys for Life two and a half out of four stars. Stream it. I think that's the best thing you could say about this movie. So, have you seen Bad Boys for Life? 
Uh, and what is your favorite Bad Boys movie? Or who's your favorite dynamic duo in a movie? Uh, comment down below. Subscribe to the channel. This is Pat, and take care.